students on the football team. You know, we've been through a lot the past month, and I'm thankful for their support. I'm thankful for their open dialogue, and I look forward to making this a learning experience that will help our institution grow and move forward. I want to thank uh, President Kaler and our Board of Regents for their support. Uh, you know, we have a lot of neat things here, and that's because of our president, our board, and their support for our athletics program and all 700 student athletes in 25 sports. I want to thank the Minnesota fans. You know, when we started this national search for a head football coach, it makes your job real easy when you can talk about a new football stadium on campus that's less than 10 years old. You can talk about a new athlete's village. Those things, those things don't happen without the great support of our fans. And so I hope you know how much we appreciate your support, you buying season tickets, and you investing in our programs. I talk a lot about investing, and you all have invested in us, and we're going to invest back in you. I want to thank the athletic department staff. You know, we have over 275 employees. I'm thankful for their support, their kind emails to me, and I hope you know how much I appreciate all your hard work. Some of you worked very hard over the past few weeks, and I really appreciate that. Coach Fleck, when we had a chance to meet the other day, the very first thing that stood out to me was his authentic energy and passion. He's a leader. If you look at his success on the field, went from a team 1-11 and to 13-0 and in an opportunity to play in the Cotton Bowl. If you look at the academic success of his students and how they set record marks academically in the Mid-American Conference. And if you look at his vision, you know, I talked last week or earlier this week about a vision that we want to compete at the highest level with great integrity and character academically, athletically, and socially. And I feel like his teams have done that. So please join me in welcoming the next head football coach at the University of Minnesota, P.J. Fleck. Good afternoon, everyone. Sky Yuma meets Row the Boat. Huh? Been waiting to say that for a long time since I got the job, to be honest with you. I am so honored uh, to be your head football coach. I want to start by thanking a lot of people. Uh, I want to thank President Kaler uh, for, your, for your commitment to the University of Minnesota, the commitment to Mark Coyle, and the commitment to your football program. I want to thank Mark Coyle. From the minute I met him, I was sold. And the reason why I was sold when I met Mark was because we share the same vision. And people ask me all the time, why Minnesota? Because we both share a vision of winning a national championship. We share a vision of winning the Big Ten West. We share a, a vision of winning the Big Ten and having Rose Bowls. And I'm not afraid to say that because that's the way I live my life. I'm not afraid to, to hide behind something and say, uh, you know, I, I, I can't promise you something. I, I'm going to promise you a lot because that's the way I live my life. And that's what I want to be able to create here at the University of Minnesota. Will it be easy? No. And that's his vision. And the minute when we sat down there and he shared that same vision with me, I knew I was sold. Because for me to be able to leave an elite institution like Western Michigan University, where my wife is from, and we've really embedded ourselves in that community, it was going to have to take something very special. And uh, Mark Coyle is a very special athletic director, and I'm proud to say that I work for him. I want to thank John Cunningham, Rhonda McFarland, Julie Manning, our Board of Regents. I look forward to meeting all of you, and especially Chair Johnson. Again, I'm incredibly humble and proud uh, to be your next head football coach here at the University of Minnesota. I want to thank Western Michigan University. Change is a very difficult time. It's a difficult time for everybody. It's a difficult time for University of Minnesota. It's a difficult time for Western Michigan University. And at the forefront of those difficult times are players and people and student athletes. I want to thank Dr. Dunn, a president who allowed an elite athletic director in Kathy Beauregard to take a shot on a 32-year-old punk that had never been a head football coach before and had never even been a coordinator to take a shot on me to lead her football team. She's more than an athletic director to me. She's a mother, she's a friend, and she's a mentor. And I know it's very difficult times, 
and I apologize to her before I left, but I had to go chase my dream as well. And the University of Minnesota is my dream. I want to thank all of our board of trustees at, at Western Michigan University, Trustee Miller, Johnson, you guys are friends of mine. You're everything to me. You've changed my entire life. But more importantly, and last but not least, I want to thank our players. I want to thank them for accepting a vision and accepting a row the boat culture that was made to change their life. And to go from 1 and 11 to 13 and 0 or 13 and 1 is a credit to those players and those players only. They were given a vision, they were given the challenge, they were given the work, and they did it. Some of the best human beings I've ever met are at Western Michigan University, and they'll always be my sons. And I thank you very much for that, players. I want to thank my wife, Heather, my agent, Brian. I want to thank my entire family. My wife, Heather, is going to be an incredible ambassador for the state of Minnesota. When you get a chance to meet her, you're going to fall in love with her immediately. She's got the biggest heart. She's warm. She's kind. But if you think I'm energetic and passionate, just wait till you meet her. She's an incredible mother. Our kids at home who are probably not watching this, but uh, hopefully they'll watch it one day. Uh, I do this for you. Uh, Gavin, Carter, Paisley, and Harper are my entire life. And I want you around our football team, and I want you around my family. And you're going to see our kids all over the place. You're going to see our coaches' kids all over the place. This is a family environment, and we define family as forget about me, I love you. This program is now about serving and giving. It's about what we can do to do things for other people. And there's no one who does more for others than my wife, Heather. I'm so in love with you, and I'm just so thankful I have you in my life. Why the University of Minnesota? Why not? This is a dream of mine ever since I was a little kid. To be able to play in the Big Ten, wasn't fortunate enough to do that. Got to play against Big Ten, but to coach in the Big Ten and to surround myself with people that would allow me to have that opportunity. And that's who I want to thank right now. I want to thank the Jim Trestles. I want to thank the Jerry Kills. Coach Kill did tell me, hey, tell him you're a kill guy. And I said, I'm a kill guy. I'm part of the kill tree. I do, I do know that. Coach Kill taught me a lot how to care for players. When I already did care for players, he taught me how to care more. Mike Nolan, who changed my entire life. Greg Schiano taught me to be how demanding, be the most demanding I could be, but also love people at the same time, to bring out the best in everyone. And I look forward to bringing out the best in our players here at the University of Minnesota. When I talk to Mark, the vision, academically, athletically, and socially, fit mine. It's a college experience. It's an elite experience. You won't hear me saying good, great, or excellent very much at all. You're going to hear me saying elite because that's the type of experience I want our student athletes to have here at the University of Minnesota. And nothing short of that. In the athletic field, like I told you before, we want to compete for Big West champions, championships, Big Ten championships, Rose Bowl championships, and national championships. And that is the vision that we start today together collectively as we move forward in the new era of gopher football that will be very energetic. That's what you get with me. Academically, our players are gonna represent the University of Minnesota in a first class fashion. You're gonna see them up front in the first two rows. You're gonna see them with a collared shirt on. The professors are gonna know they're football players. And I'm sure there's some out there that say, oh, well, he's a football player. Eventually, I want them to say, that is the definition of a student athlete. And then socially, why Minnesota? The Twin Cities. The Twin Cities, that's all I have to say, the Twin Cities. I used to recruit here, and I used to have a fabulous time coming through the Twin Cities to recruit. That's why Minnesota. With a shared vision, I look forward to rowing with you forward as we continue to go through our time together. A lot of you are going to ask me about recruiting. The number one thing in this culture and this program is recruiting. And listen to my words, it is recruiting. And it's going to take every single person in this room. Media, you have a job to do. You're going to do it. I promise I'll give you a lot. I have a job to do, and I know that. But recruiting is the number one pipeline 
and lifeline to any program. What does that mean? It means we are going to recruit our student athletes every single day with the positivity and the energy of the University of Minnesota football every day to think University of Minnesota is the greatest place on earth. That is what we're going to do. We're also going to recruit the finest student athletes in the country. And you know where we're going to start? And you know where we're going to build walls up around? Our elite state of Minnesota. And that's what I'm dedicated to. We're going to draw a circle around six to seven hours around the Twin City area. And then we're going to go to work. Because we want to fill the bank every single game. How do you do that? This has to be more than football. I am more than football. Our kids will be more than football. And I want you to share that vision with me. What does it mean, more than football? We are going to serve and give as much as we possibly can to each other on our football team, to our community, to other student athletes. It's not about us anymore. In the new era of Gopher football, it is not about us. It's about how we can serve and give other people. We're going to connect people to go for football that don't even like football. We're going to connect them because of how we do things. They're going to want to be a part of it. See, the how of a person is your heart, your spirit, your mind, your soul. And it can't be measured by a ruler. It can be measured by your actions. And our players will have incredible elite actions every single day. And we are here as leaders to teach them how to do that. When you watch go for football from this point forward, it will be different. I am different. Year one is about a dig. I am not here to change tradition. Sky U Ma is gonna be all over the place. Row the boat will be mixed. I am not here to change tradition. What I am here to do is change a culture, to change a movement, for us to create and experience things that the University of Minnesota football has only dreamed of and hasn't accomplished since the late 60s. With all due respect, that's why I took the job. My entire life has been about running into the fire, not away from the fire. I eat difficult conversations for breakfast. And that is why I took this job. For every reason not to take a job, that's why I took it. That's the story of my life. I have a crack on my shoulder, not a chip. We are going to find a way to out-care everyone else. Out-give everybody else and out-how everybody else. And that is my commitment. And that is my wife, wife's Heather, Heather's commitment and my kids' commitment and our student athletes' commitment to make everybody in this room proud of the University of Minnesota football because we're all a part of it. And I promise you, you are going to have a lot of things to write about instead of finding little nidbits that we can sit there and focus on the negativity that surrounds student athletes in 2017. We're going to do everything we can so you can write about the positivity and making our national brand felt by the entire nation because that's what's going to happen. We want this to become a national brand, a national movement, where people from all over the country want to come to the University of Minnesota because it's different. It has energy. It's unique. It's uncommon. And I'm okay with that because that's me. I'm so proud to be your head football coach. I'm very honored to lead these young men into a new era. And I look forward to the challenge every day of that leadership role. Sky Yuma and row the boat. We'll open up for questions. Uh, Coach uh, Joe Schmidt, KSTP TV Hi, in Joe. Minneapolis. How you doing? Uh, doing welcome. Um, last year, this team won nine games. I is this a reclamation project? Uh, the cupboard's not bare, or do you think you can win right away out of the gates? I think I've got to do a lot more investigation into what we actually have, what we have coming in, um, what we have that's, that's, that's moving on. Um, but I look at it as a cultural change. 
Uh, I, this is not a complete rebuild of a tradition and culture. This is a cultural change, though. And so, like I said, for the first year of digging, that's what that is. It's digging to find out uh, how much we have to dig, what, uh, what culture, what types of the culture we have to change, what doesn't need to be changed, how we can um, work through the different branches of how we've got to be able to get things done. But I do know this, uh, the staff that was here before deserved those nine wins. And they did a tremendous job on the field. And uh, we want to continue that type of success as we move forward. I did. You know, I got a chance. It was very unique. It was a very unique team meeting. Uh, I, I met with about 25 of them in the room, and the rest of them were on FaceTime Live. So Facebook Live. That is the new thing for student-athletes in 2017. So it was very unique because they are on break and they are away. Uh, but the first thing I did tell them was, it was very simple. Guys, you did not pick me. You did not pick me. But I picked you. And I promise you this, every single day, I'm the solution guy. I'm going to find a solution to make your life elite. Your personal life, your social life, your spiritual life, your academic life, your athletic life, that is my job. And that is what I get paid to do. Remember, I am the how coach. I am the character coach. I am the people coach. The head football coach's job has a lot more to do with people than players. That's the way we look at it. So that is what I told them. And uh, it's, a, it's, an, it's an elite group. Uh, a lot of them were looking me up and down, left to right, measuring me up. And I kept saying, guys, I'm not much. I get it. I get it. I get it. Okay, I'm not much. All right. Um, but I could feel the energy. And I could feel they've, uh, they've embraced the change. And uh, I know there's going to be a lot of challenges ahead. I know there's going to be people that fit with the change, that don't fit with the change, that like the change, that don't like the change, but that's change is hard. And uh, everybody wants change until you get change. Well, I got news for everybody. Change has arrived. Hi, PJ. Jeff Christensen, Star Tribune. When you got to, uh, when... Northern at Northern Illinois when Jerry Kill's staff took over where how did you feel like you meshed with that that group and how how did those experiences for two years uh, kind of shape who you are well coach kill taught me so much in this profession uh, coach kill like I said he, he, he taught me how to care through the head coach's eyes and um, they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care and that is Jerry kill to a T um, and his staff was absolutely elite to me um, we had a lot of success together and then I knew I wanted to become a head football coach. And uh, leaving that staff to take a job at Rutgers was very difficult to me, for me to do because I enjoyed my time with Jerry Kill. Uh, it was a very um, influential time in my life. He taught me so much. But then I had to leave and, and go expand and, and go work for Greg Schiano, uh, who's one of the most demanding coaches in the country, uh, but taught me to get the most out of people. So I really enjoyed my time. We accomplished a lot together and uh, very, very smart football coaches. Coach over here. Uh, I'm Jim Rich with Fox 9. Hi, Jim. Welcome to Minnesota. <laughs> Thank you. Where did you find in yourself this personality where you felt that you could go out and change people's lives? You know, I, I, if you got to go back to know who I am as a person. I'm the runt, okay? I'm the king of the twos. Too small, too short, too young, too inexperienced. I could go on and on with T-O-O. That's been my life. If there was a nine-year-old baseball team, I was seven, and my dad stuffed me on that team. If I went down the hill with the boys, I was the youngest on the block, I'd get beat up, I'd come back up crying, and my dad would say, what are you doing? I said, well, the guy just got beat up. Get back down there and go find a way to make it work. That's what he said. Uh, I'd come back in from shooting hoops on the driveway. I'd come in, I'd be done. My dad would give me an option. He'd go, what are you doing? I said, I'm coming in. It's dark. I'd go to bed. Well, there's somebody out there shooting one more free throw than you, just so you know there, bud. I'll put the lights on the driveway if you want me to. I'll pull the car up. We, were, we lived on a slant. I'll pull the car up on that basketball hoop for you to see it. But he made me make that choice. And uh, I think that was very important in my upbringing. I've always been the king of the twos. I've got a crack on my shoulder, not a chip. And it's not to prove to other people that I can do something. It's to prove to myself that I can change lives. I'm an educator. I'm a teacher. 
I have an elementary education degree. So how does that help a football team? Well, I'm a teacher. I'm a teacher of life, and I'm a teacher of football. It's my job to find the most cultural way to teach the old lifetime lessons. If you're going to teach a rivalry, you can't teach Jordan and Bird anymore. You know, they think Jordan's the guy that makes the sneakers, right? You got to use Kanye and Drake. That's the rivalry they actually think about. So for me, that's where that comes from, finding unique ways. Remember, my background is to have 36 sixth graders that all learn 36 different ways and teach them one lesson about ancient Rome. So there's no different in my team meetings. If you'd ever like to come into a team meeting, I'll invite you. It'll be the most unique experience in your entire life. I promise you that because that's my classroom. I talk to my team every single day, as long as we're in the building, as long as we have the proper meeting time for at least 20 minutes. And 95% of it has nothing to do with football. It has to do with life and uh, leadership and our culture and how we can continue to change our best and grow higher. So, great question. Uh, Mike Hendrickson from the Hi, Minnesota Mike. Daily. Uh, this program has been under a lot of turmoil recently. What is your immediate plan to address that? Yeah, here's the one thing I'll address on that. Uh, very broad, but I have, I really don't have anything to comment on because I don't know much about it. Uh, I'm here today, and so my era starts now and moving forward. It's not about that in the past for me. Um, but I do know this, uh, it, uh, a concern of our players, they asked a question today about it. We talked about it, and we moved on. Um, but I did tell them the same thing, that my focus is on them now, not them back when. It's them now, and that's why I'm here. Um, I'm a solution-driven guy, and that's what I want to continue to do as we move forward uh, through go for football. Coach Joe Augustine with KSTP. Hi, you talked about recruiting. One of your recruitment of one player while at Western Michigan was heavily criticized after it came to surface that that player had been accused of sexual assault multiple times. You said your staff had no knowledge of that. Uh, we talked to a lawyer in Ohio who said it was widely known that those accusations were out there and that the information about those allegations were easily obtained through police reports. So my question for you is what kind of vetting of that player was done and what kind of vetting will take place of recruits here at the university? Yeah, first and foremost, I, I took 100 percent responsibility for that um, in terms of uh, I allowed that kid on the football team. I had zero knowledge, zero knowledge of that information prior. He was a walk on that was recruited later. And um, I learned a lot from that to not have a walk on that late. And uh, it was the one time that I kind of uh, didn't do enough to make sure uh, that there wasn't the background that he had. However, we investigated it and we did our due diligence with the high school, the high school coach, the high school principal at the time. And the information we got back from them and the information we got back from them had no recollection of anything that that young man had done. We're not allowed to do background checks in the NCAA. And again, that's where the mistake happened. And um, I learned a lot from that as we continue to move forward. We had four years and, and one major incident like that. One too many. Way one too many. And that falls on the responsibility of the head football coach. And as we move forward, the thorough process of that, learning and growing from your mistakes. Um, again, not knowing that information, I couldn't do anything different except be way, way more thorough. And again, going through that has made me a better football coach, has made me a better head football coach, has made us all better recruiters uh, to not just take people that we trust word for it. We're going to take that as part of the process, but we're going to even dig down deeper legally because there are things that we can't do legally uh, that would have led us to that. Um, so that's how we're going to do as we continue to grow higher and we continue to move forward into the future. And again, failing like I did as a head football coach, um, of that time in the four years, that time, that failing we define as growth. Failure is quit. And again, part of becoming a man is taking accountability for your actions. That's how we define a man, taking accountability for your actions. And I'm the boss, I'm the leader. And again, uh, the leadership part of that is what we took from that as we continue to move forward of how we're going to change that. One follow-up for you on that. Did you discuss that with Mr. Coyle during your interview process? I sure did, and, and, and Mr. Coyle deserves a lot of credit for that because he approached me, and that was a five- to six-hour process, and I give him a lot of credit for it um, because a lot of people might just turn the other way. That showed me how committed to becoming elite he truly was, and it was something that showed me how much he cared about the University of Minnesota and our student-athletes, that we're not going to allow somebody to come in here to allow this to happen again and we will not 
is there is a zero tolerance policy. Once we found out about it, the minute I found out whether it was one in, one in the morning, the minute I had it, they were suspended indefinitely. Six hours later, they were kicked off the football team. And uh, my job is to move very quickly, very thoroughly, and that's what I'll do at the University of Minnesota. Um, I'm, a, I'm a dad, I'm a husband, I'm a father, and uh, I'm, it's a very sensitive topic, and there's a zero tolerance policy. Thank you for asking that question. John Krasinski with Associated Press. Coach, this was a very fast process. I mean, just, just curious, two-part question. How were you able, how much homework were you able to do on everything that you needed to know before you wanted to take this job, make sure this was the right fit for you? And then, two, when Mark Coyle fired Tracy Clay, as he said he was looking for someone to unite the program again. And just what is your sense for the divide that exists between players and administration, and how do you kind of go about building a bridge over that? Well, the biggest thing is, you know, I'm a leader. Uh, and what I want to do is be a bridge and connect. And that's what I told our players today. Trust me just to be able to connect. Let's start with you and I first, and then we'll continue to develop from there. Um, but for me, in terms of the University of Minnesota football job, that was very fast. You know, I thought I was going to stay at Western Michigan forever. Jim Trestle told me, work like you're going to stay there forever. Recruit like you're going to stay there forever. Develop facilities, everything like you're going to be there forever. And that's what I did. I gave every bit of energy and time I could have to Western Michigan University. I think a lot of credit has to go to my agent, Brian Harlan. We discuss things in the off season. We discuss future. We discuss where we're headed. And as we, even since before we became a head football coach, said, where would you like to be a head football coach one day, PJ? And the University of Minnesota was always on that list. And um, that's not necessarily what other people would look at me and say, oh, wow, that's your dream job? You bet. You bet. And that's why I said it's a dream come true. And so the minute it came open, my eyes went like this. And I remember my wife, Heather, looking at me like, and we both didn't say anything to each other. It was just we stared at each other um, because we knew that this was something that we wanted to pursue. But we knew if we pursued it, we'd hurt a lot of people at home. And that's what I just want to make sure that everybody understands back home, back at Western Michigan University, because I, I forever will be a Bronco. That's the first place that ever took a chance on me. And um, that was very difficult. Because that was the hardest part. The excitement was there. It was the immediate, like, maybe we got a shot at this thing. Maybe they'll be kind enough to ask us. But then there was also, like, whew, this was going to be a hard one to separate. Uh, because that's, that's the caring factor. That's how much embedded we are into a community and a culture uh, when, when the flex come to town. And uh, that's what we're going to do. St. Paul Pioneer Press. Uh, you talked to the coaching staff and what they did to win nine games. Uh, as you're looking at uh, building a, a staff, are these guys, since you do have a connection with them, are they candidates to be on the staff, and how does that shape up for you? Yeah, I'm going to look at everything over the next few days. I'm going to move very quickly. Uh, there is going to be some members of my staff that come with. Um, there might be some members of the staff that stay. I don't know that right now. Uh, I've got to evaluate that tonight and tomorrow, but I want to move very quickly because this is very similar to when I was hired at, hired at Western Michigan. And uh, there's not a lot of time, especially before a very important signing day. You've got to get a lot of people in the boat. You've got to, got to, got to get a lot of people rowing. You've got to a lot of, get a lot of people to see the vision, and you've got to go. And for that to happen, a lot of people that know the vision have to get here. Okay? Um, but when I'm looking at my staff, I'm looking at three things, really. Uh, the first thing is a, a, an elite teacher. And I'm not saying just an elite teacher of football, an elite teacher of life. And I want them to take the lifetime lessons and teach them in a very cultural way. Remember, I'm an educator, an elementary school teacher. So when you walk into our assistant coaches' offices, it's like going into a sixth grade classroom. There's going to be things all over the place. It's constant learning. It's constant movement. Coaches that can teach in multiple different ways to affect all types of student athletes. Um, we want evaluators. We have to have evaluators. And that's of talent, not just skill. Because skill was given to you when you were born. I obviously had no height skill. Okay? I didn't have weight skill. I didn't have speed skill. But I had talent. I had an inner burning desire to become elite. And that is what I want our coaches to be able to have a very unique sense of. And if, to be able to have that, you have to have that yourself. And most of the coaches that I've worked for or worked with have had that. They've been the king of the twos themselves. They're elite evaluators. And obviously the talent part is that. It's a combination of the athletic, but also the person and the how. And the last is men of integrity. 
I never want me, uh, the men that coach for me to ask somebody to do something they wouldn't do themselves. We define maturity as when doing what you have to do becomes doing what you want to do. It's the perfect definition of being mature. There's a lot of things you go around your house you don't want to do, and you're lazy enough to do it. You let somebody else do it. But if it's what you have to do becomes doing what you want to do, that's powerful. And those are the type of coaches we want to bring here. And um, I'll continue to work on that in the next few days. We all know how much the row the boat thing means to you and Western Michigan. I read it's trademarked. Can that come with you, or where is that? I, I plan on bringing it with. I think it's something we got to handle as we continue to move forward. It's a major staple in my own personal life. It has a lot of personal meaning, but it can bring a lot of people together. Like I said before, uh, we need everybody rowing in the same direction, same speed, same efficiency. It's going to take all of us, everybody. And again, a lot of people in this room, you might like me already. There's a lot of people in this room might not like me anybody already. That's okay. One thing I am, I am not perfect, but I am real. You won't, re, you won't meet a, a more real person in the entire world. And um, that's what we're going to continue to do as we move forward. And row the boat will be a part of that. I want it to be a part of that. I hope it's a part of that. Uh, but, you know, Sky Yuma is everything. But the story of Sky Yuma, there's a canoe, which is a boat, you got a paddle, which is an oar, and we've got the Northern Star here, which is our compass. And I'll tell you a quick story. The minute my wife Heather and I read Wikipedia together, because I'll be honest, I had to read it, I don't want people to have to look up Sky Yuma on Wikipedia. I want it to be a national brand and a national saying. Now, it's going to encompass a little row the boat in there, here and there. Okay? I promise you somehow, some way. But that is our vision. But the minute we saw that, and there was a paddle, and there was a canoe, and there was a star for direction, we looked at each other and said, don't ignore the signs. And we didn't ignore the signs. And that's why we're here. Uh, Michael Rand with the Star Tribune in Minneapolis. Um, now, Mark Coyle said when, upon releasing Tracy Clays, he, he talked a lot about those three things you mentioned, the academics, the athletics, the social things. You are going to be the youngest Power 5 coach in college football. Is that a lot of responsibility to put on you? Age is a number. If I took you through my, you can more than welcome, we'll hang out for a while. You, I will tell you my entire life. I have lived three lives in 36 years. It does not come down to numbers. It really doesn't. It comes down to about people who have influenced your life. What have they set you up for? Have they believed in you? Have they not believed in you? What have they instilled in you? And I promise you this, I'm very confident at doing the job that I do. And you're going to see that confidence flow through our players and the belief system in each other and the positivity that we are with our student athletes, you will see. I can't wait for all of you to come to practice. It'll be the most unique thing you've ever seen in your entire life. It'll be one of the fastest things you've ever seen in your entire life. And it'll be one of the most upbeat, passionate practices you've ever seen in your entire life. And I can't wait to share that experience with all of you. But age never has bothered me. Again, goes back to my upbringing. King of the twos. Too small, too short, too young, too inexperienced, whatever it's been. And it's just another challenge. But it's better than being the alternative. I'll take it. And as we continue to move forward, we got a lot of years together. I appreciate everybody's time. Sky you mop and roll the boat. Thank you very much.